So you can connect with us on Mondays, Wednesdays, or Fridays between 9 and 9.30 a.m., where we bring our portable distance learning studio to the top of our 135,000-gallon shark habitat. And you can engage in a live narrated feeding and training session with our aquarium biologist hosted by yours truly. Now, assuming that you aren't able to wake up that early in the morning, that that's just a little out of your school session time zone schedule, then we do provide some other opportunities as well. Now, we only feed our sharks three times a week, but that doesn't mean that we don't have these shark programs catered to your busy schedules. We have another version of this program that can come to your classroom uh, from our distance learning studio, exactly where I'm connecting to you from now. Now, we use technology and pre-recorded footage to simulate the exact same feeding and training experiences that you'd be able to see on those Monday, Wednesday, Friday live experiences. Now, these programs run about 30 minutes and are primarily geared towards the ages of third grade through 12th grade. So we can tailor it to having more introductory marine science, all the way up to more advanced science as well. Now, for all of you elementary school teachers out there, no worries, because we have some fantastic opportunities for you. So we have a wonderful program called See Me Read Series, which includes programs such as Shark Baby, where you are actually able to jump inside of a virtual story time. It's very similar to a Blue's Clues style program where I actually get to jump inside of the story. We learn all about different animal ecosystems. We learn about what a habitat even is, what are some ocean habitats. It's a great comprehension program to learn all about reading, lit marine literacy, as well as just word comprehension in general. It promotes oral language skills, fluency, pronunciation, and is a very stimulating engagement program as well. So this is another 30-minute program. It's primarily suitable for grades K through 3, and it's also great for any special needs programs as well. Now, this we also have programs that are free. So this is one of our programs that is a free program that has a teacher activity guide that goes along with the story. So there's lots of ways to dive deeper here at Moat, and we do have these opportunities where there are post-assessment options in order to bring these lessons to your classroom even after your virtual field trip is over. Now, if you just can't get enough of us and you want a 60-minute experience, do not worry because we have those options that are listed on the Ed Explore SRQ website under Moat Marine Laboratory. So one of our primary 60-minute programs is our Shark Science program under our Shark Science series. Now, as you probably guessed, this program is about sharks and it's teaching your students about some of the biggest misconceptions about sharks. It's kind of like a shark facts versus myth program. So it's an interactive live quiz show, kind of a half video game, half quiz show style program to discover the mysteries and truths around these fascinating fishes. So participants will learn all about the behavior of sharks, different species of sharks, there's over 500, so that's why it's a 60 minute program. <laughs> and the anatomy and physiology of sharks, including the science behind shark senses. So your students will be able to learn about some of the popular misconceptions about these animals and why they are misunderstood. At the end, there is an open Q&A session, so they can ask a guest expert. We're able to see some of our shark science based on our shark laboratory biologists here at Moat, get to see some cutting edge state-of-the-art research that's taking, on, taking place behind the scenes here at our laboratory. Now, because this program is a little sciencey and a little longer, it's primarily geared for sixth grade and up. And it does run for those 60 minutes, but our shark science program isn't the only amazing 60 minute opportunity program we offer here. We also do a sea turtle science program. We also do a manatee science program. And my personal favorite program that we offer here is called Sea Science at Work. So this is kind of like a variety show. It's a little bit of everything that we offer all combined into one hour. 
So it's a great way to look at some STEM careers and see what it means to be a marine scientist. So this program includes a behind the scenes look at the research facilities here at Moat, some examples of different scientists working in the field and within their laboratory spaces, some awesome conservation messages, some great take home messages, and some open ended question and answers at the end with our experts in the marine science fields. There are also is lots of different B-roll video as well. So we are able to bring some actual hands-on pre-recorded video to your students to see what it looks like actually in the, their science programs. So some of the programs in this variety show include shark research, animal husbandry, sea turtle nesting, manatee research and training, what it means to be a coral reef researcher and biologist and so much more. Now, all of the programs we're discussing today are available right now for you to book. And the Sarasota teachers automatically save 10% off the price of any of our programs. So there are additional discounts as well. For example, any Title I schools with a student population of over 40% are also offered additional discounts. And feel free to contact us for any additional information. Now, additionally, Ed Explore SRQ listings are eligible for funding from the Community Foundation of Sarasota County, as well as the Education Foundation of Sarasota County. So there's lots of ways for you to connect with us, a lot of bang for your buck, right? Now, the one last thing we want to talk about is a free professional development opportunity for any teacher. If you'd like for any of us to deliver the same, the same preview of any of our award-winning virtual learning programs to your school or your administrators, feel free to click on the educator free view button and schedule a time to chat. Now, this is a great way to introduce Moat's virtual learning field trips and discover so much more of the affordable, easy to use options when connecting to marine science here at Moat. Now, at the end of every program, we do offer the opportunity for students and teachers to ask us any questions. So I'd like to invite my colleague Brad and Jason back into the program to answer any questions you teachers might have. And thank you so much for tuning in today. Awesome, Ross. Thank you so much. Does anybody have any questions? I know we're kind of running behind on time too. So. Feel free to either unmute yourself if you have a question, raise your Zoom hand, we love that one, or um, you can type a question into the chat if you would like. So I see that with Courtney was raising her hand. Yes. Um, how much is it like average per cost per student? Yes. Absolutely. So that's a great question. So we roughly break it down into about $2 per minute is what our price breakdown looks like. So our 30 minute programs run to be about $70 and then our hour long programs roughly run to be about $110 to $120, but then plus all the discounts that are available to you as well. Now the fun part is it's the price per booking. So it's not price per student. So depending on if you're connecting to one individual classroom that and all your students are in the same classroom, that's the same price as if you just emailed out the same Zoom code to all your students who are connecting from home. So we have the opportunity to do both so we can connect to one point to point contact to your class or we can pretty much do what we're looking at right now where it's kind of a big collage of all the individual students tuning in. If that answers your question. And just a reminder, the the uh, community foundation grants would be perfect to help defray the costs for these explorations. Any other questions? It's hard to see everyone. Emma, um, Emma raised her hand. All right, Emma. Oh, we um, actually my colleague Andrew Jaffe is with me, and he has a question. Oh, hi. sorry. Ah, sorry, <laughs> Sherry already heard this question earlier, but we're, we, we think there's a really exciting opportunity for um, Sarasota County Schools with the Thanksgiving week. There's two days that um, we're in school and we're imagining a world where uh, specials comes to a stop and instead the specials teachers uh, do a school-wide six classes in a row activity. So for example, like 
uh, our entire fifth grade, which would be more than 100 kids from uh, 855 to uh, 940, and then just cycling through the whole day where, with a school-wide activity, would Mo have a way to approach um, this kind of a whole day through a school plan? Thank you. Yes. Hey, Andrew, this is Brad. Yeah, absolutely. We can definitely chat maybe offline and try to figure something out to see what that would look like, but we could definitely connect C-Trek um, to several different classrooms and work on something for those days as well. Definitely. Great. Awesome. Thanks. I Go think ahead, yeah. I think we're about out of time for Mo. We might have some time at the very end for some further questions. Brad, was there something else you wanted to, to, to close with? No, that, I think that was it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and Ross for advertising our great programs and hopefully to see you guys soon and work with your students. We appreciate all that you do. Just want to help you guys out. So thanks. Thanks, Mode. Awesome. Angela, did you want to introduce next or are, are sure. we just ready? I, I think that we are ready, but I'll go ahead and introduce because you tossed it over to me. Um, our next presenter is gonna, going to be the amazing uh, Katie Nichol from The Ringling, and I know she's all ready to go, and I will turn it over to Katie. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much. I am going to take just a second and share my screen and pin my video. Actually, I'm going to replace the video. Can everyone see me okay? If anyone could just shout in and say that we look good or not. Looks good. Perfect. Thank you. All right. So, um, hi, everyone. I am so thrilled to be here. Thank you so much uh, to Brian and Angela for inviting me to speak to all of you. I am uh, really thrilled to be here and, and meet you all virtually. So, my name is Katie Nichol, and I work at the Ringling Museum. And we are also doing a lot of virtual tours just to kind of echo what Brad and Ross and everyone was saying. Uh, uh, things are getting weird this year. We also are not doing any in-person field trips, but we have kind of shifted our programs online. And I'm going to talk uh, for a couple minutes about some of the different options that we have available for teachers. So uh, I'd like to just start off by covering the basics. All of our virtual tours at the Ringling, uh, we work directly with our Florida State standards. So you can be absolutely assured that when you take a program with us, we can provide you with a list of standards based on your subject area that you're trying to include. We can be um, and uh, we can address any specific standards that you may have in mind. Uh, but for the most part, we always include an English language arts. Um, and visual arts, of course, uh, standards on all of our tours. Our tours are for our elementary school level are all but one um, really very focused on arts integration. Uh, so really tying into those English language arts standards, helping students learn and practice uh, basic reading and writing skills, observation skills that they need to be successful readers. And we do that through looking and talking about visual arts. We also incorporate uh, the social and emotional learning aspect into all of our tours. That's something that's very important to us, that all of our students uh, begin to build those uh, self-awareness and social awareness skills that they need to be successful outside of the academic classroom as well. And then lastly, uh, we're using Zoom right now. We love uh, Zoom at the Ringling, but we are just as happy to use Microsoft Teams or any other platform that you may suggest, as long as you host it, we'll show up and we'll do a tour with your students. So we are very flexible um, and all of our tours are really designed to be uh, kind of highlighting that concurrent learning that we're all doing um, by both zooming into the classroom setting for the students who are there in person, but also making sure that our folks at home are not being kind of left off the bandwagon. Uh, we wanna make sure that all of our virtual tours are inclusive for all of our learners at all times. Um, we do have two different programs. So we have our virtual tour program and that manifests in two different ways. I'm going to talk about both of them today. The first is our video tours and lesson plans. These are um, video tours, uh, short segments that you would facilitate on your own. So there is not a live component there. Um, your students will not be talking to me. And then the second program that we offer are the live virtual tour programs. And that's me zooming into your classroom with your students. So there are two different ways to play. The first way that I mentioned is that video tour and lesson plans. And here's just a few quick facts. Uh, these are completely free programs. 
They are 10 to 20 minute long videos. Um, they are on our YouTube site, so you are more than welcome to uh, just look up the Ringling on YouTube and use these, plug them in however you want. Um, throughout these video tours, and I'm not going to show a segment of them now because I realize that that would get um, a little bit repetitive for what we're about to do in the second half of this uh, chat together. Um, but our video tours and lesson plans all include different writing prompts, uh, different points where you can pause the video with your students and have a discussion with your students about uh, what they're seeing um, or tying it into specific different uh, lessons that you may be doing in your classroom as well. So all of these include uh, the English language arts and the visual arts standards throughout, and they have come with a list of those as well, um, applicable for grades K through five, unless otherwise noted. And like I mentioned, they're totally free. They're already up on YouTube. Feel free to check them out, preview them, um, and really uh, use them however you want in your classroom. They're designed to be very flexible. Uh, they also do come with lesson plans. And so to get the lesson plans, we do ask that you just fill out a little form for us, let us know how many students you're using these with so you know we can keep track and keep our grants too. Um, but there again, the lesson plans are totally free. They come with three lesson plans per video. So there's a lesson plan to prime your students for the video tour, short little warm up. There's the, a lesson plan on how do you actually facilitate this video tour on your own, right? Because um, I'm not gonna zoom in with your class to, to help facilitate that. So it's a very clear step-by-step, -step, you know, how do you pull these up, when to pause, all of that situation. And then a follow-up activity that you can do with your students as well. And again, totally flexible. You can use these um, however you see fit for your classroom. Um, you can mix and match, uh, really kind of designed to be very flexible and, and give you as the teacher total control over what you'd like to use and how you'd like to use it. And then our second program that we offer, um, and this is the one I'd like to focus a little more on tonight um, because I personally think it's a little more fun, are our live virtual tours. And so these run between 20 and 40 minutes depending on your classroom needs. Uh, we can be as short as you need us to or as long as you need us to. Um, these are also customizable. So our video tour is, it, you know, it's a recorded video, so it is what it is. But for do a live virtual program with us, we really want to make sure that we're using artworks and we are using standards that's going to work for your classroom, your curriculum that week. Uh, so we're very flexible on that. We also have the opportunity to add on some live art making. So I know for a lot of specials teachers, but also for classroom teachers too, if you'd like to incorporate a hands-on making activity, um, all you need are pencils and paper, um, depending on whatever your, your kids have handy. And we can certainly add an art making component on free, completely free of charge. These are free programs as well. And then lastly, the live virtual tours kind of by nature are a little bit more interactive and engaging because I'm right there with your students all the time. Um, and we're going to do a model of that in just a moment of, of how engaging these can be. Um, but they're very really designed to make sure that all of your students, both the ones in a classroom, a brick and mortar classroom, and the kids learning at home um, are engaged and they're having fun while, while we're doing some learning. So these are a few of the tour uh, themes that we have to option uh, to kind of customize. And again, if there's something that you have in mind and you think the museum would be a great fit for that curriculum, we are willing to work with you on a one-on-one -on -one basis. But these are a few of the tours that we've been doing pretty frequently. Um, and they're kind of like a, a good, a good go-to material. So we have our circus careers and other curiosities. The circus is always fun. Um, talking about different jobs and skills that you might need if you joined a circus. So this is a huge hit with the elementary school age group um, who loves the circus and also loves to talk about seeing themselves represented in the circus. That's something that's very important to us. We have the artful imagination. I'm not going to talk about that too much. I'm going to come back to that in just a moment. Um, but this is really a tour that is designed to look at art and try to begin to think like an artist. So this is definitely a big hit with our specials teachers. We have an animal safari, which also uses our science standards, uh, looking at animals through art um, and using our observation skills, putting on our scientist hat as we observe animals in different habitats. 
And then lastly, we have a Meet the Ringling tour, which is a basic introduction to, you know, what even is art? Uh, we realize that a lot of students may never have visited a museum before. Um, they're not sure what museums are, um, and trying to define art, even as an adult, can be really tricky. So this tour is designed to give you a broad overview of some of the things we have at the Ringling um, and begin to challenge students to think about, you know, what are museums and what is art and, and what does that mean for me? So I mentioned we're going to do a little demonstration. So if you have um, paper and like crayons or markers or something handy, fantastic, get those out to, uh, right now. If not, we're going to go ahead and also use the chat box because we also realize that with um, a lot of our students, they also may not necessarily have um, access to all of the fancy art materials all the time as well. So go ahead and pull up your chat box. We're going to be doing some talking about art. Uh, together and I'd love to hear all of your comments and what you're seeing in the art right there in the chat box as well. So we're going to just jump on in. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and take a very, very short look at uh, this painting and I'm going to open up and I'm asking all of you as teachers, what is going on in this picture? What do you see happening here? And this could be any observation from, I see a woman, uh, to kind of what you think this uh, painting may mean or represent for you today. So go ahead and drop that in the chat box if you would mind. What is going on in this picture? No right or wrong answers in art. Okay, so Lisa is seeing that there are cupids surrounding a surprised woman. And I love, Lisa, that you're using the word surprised. I'm wondering if you wouldn't mind typing back in the box, what do you see that made you say surprised? What is it about this woman that makes you think that she's surprised? Yep, and the moat folks are seeing that she's outdoors and we see that too. Um, there's some trees here in the top left background, some wispy clouds going around. She seems to be seated on an outcropping looking down onto a valley. Uh, some of us, Courtney's seeing some helpful cupids. Yep, there are two cupids, uh, winged babies going on. They're draping this woman with some flowers. Tracy noticed that one of the cupids has butterfly wings, but the other has bird-like wings. So maybe that's pretty significant. For sure. I also noticed that one of the, the babies, the one that has the uh, butterfly rings, that cupid is almost warning the woman. All right, so we're seeing lots of flowers. Um, Stephen ha thinks that this feels playful. Hang on to that, Stephen. I'm going to ask you about that again in just a moment. Ben notices that there's a bird in the woman's hand. Yep, it looks like there could be um, a little bird kind of drawn up to her chest. Very interesting. Not um, a way that I play with my bird pets today. Martha thinks that the cupids may be getting her ready for an event, and yeah, definitely, she's dressed really fancy, like she's about to go out on the town. They're draping her with these flowers. Um, there's a lot of things going on here, for sure. This is great work, everybody. Feel free to keep it up. But what we're gonna switch over to now, um, and, and again, feel free to continue to share your observations with me, is let's create a very quick color palette for this painting. So look at this painting, and you can type this into the chat box, or if you have markers and crayons, you can make little squiggles. I'll share mine with you here. Of some of the main colors that you notice in this painting, what are the main predominant colors that you're picking up on? And again, you can type that into the chat box, or um, include that on uh, a separate piece of paper as well. So we'll give everybody kind of a moment to identify some of the colors. I know for me, I noticed a lot of this light pale blue that I see not only in the sky, but in the woman's bodice as well, kind of complemented and offset by this kind of pale baby pink as well. Um, but there's a lot of uh, contrast between light and dark is something that I've really noticed here. There's light blue, but then there's really this deep, dark, uh, velvety blue. There's a lot of light pink that you notice at first, but then there's a lot of dark pinks to offset that in the flower garland as well. Lots of balance between light and dark in this painting. Fantastic. So I think we all have had enough time to kind of think through a color palette. So I'm going to ask you all a, a question, and I'd love if you responded in the chat box for me as well. What emotion would you use to describe this painting? Based on everything we've talked about, all of the different pieces we've identified together as a group in this painting, the flowers, the playful nature of the cupids, the outdoor setting, and then also considering the different colors that we've identified in this painting, what emotion would you use to describe this painting? Keeping all of that in mind.
So um, we have a couple coming in, and feel free to type that into the chat box. Don't be shy. We have calming, romantic, tearful. Stephen has happiness, which I think goes into that playful mode that you identified right off the bat. Emma's feeling curious. Um, Brad or someone else at, Ma at Moat is feeling com uh, serene. We have compassion, chill. Tracy thinks it looks very hopeful. There's a lot of light on the woman and the cherubs. Um, where there is dark, some dark clouds in the background, but Tracy's noticing that they're dissipating, they're going away. Wendy feels joyful. This is fantastic. Yeah, we're all feeling different emotions when we look at this work of art, and that's fantastic. We're all going to come with our own set of experiences, and the way that we feel about different works of art is going to be different. That's normal in art. It's a great way to celebrate how different we all are. But I'm noticing that there's a lot of things that we have in common. Overall, um, and maybe uh, you can type into the chat box if you do disagree with me, um, but this feeling, um, this painting has a very kind of happy, light, playful, um, hopeful feeling going on with it. And the colors have a lot to do with that. Um, it would have a very different feeling if instead of light blue in the clouds and the sky in the background, if this was a more ominous feeling, right? It would give it a totally different mood. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and skip on ahead and uh, take any questions. Thank you all so much for playing with me today. Um, I, I love to do like little samples and, and get us all to look at art as teachers too. I think that's really important that, um, you know, we're here for you to support your students, but we're also here to support all of us as well. Um, and we hope that kind of taking a break, looking at art together can provide a little respite in all of um, our day-to-day -day lives as well. So I think I only have a couple minutes, but if anyone has any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, I'll go ahead and stop sharing so we can see everybody. Feel free to let me know if you have any questions either in the chat box or unmute yourself. And I will drop that last um, link into the chat box where if you're interested in learning more, feel free to go to our website. We have a very simple form to request a field trip. Any questions for Katie in the ring lane? And I realize they may come up later. So if later on down the road, you'd like to privately message me, do feel free. I observe a content group of folks who are maybe more knowledgeable now than before. Uh, so in my visual thinking observations, perhaps. Um, Great observation, Brian. Last chance, friends. Katie, thank you so much. Thank you all for letting me be here today. It was a joy to look at some art with you all together. Amazing, amazing indeed. Well, it looks like we've had some successful bingo uh, participants. Fabulous, amazing. And we're now gonna move to our final presenter, uh, Kelly Maldonado from the Van Wazel. Kelly. Sure, hi everyone, it's good to see you. Um, I'm Kelly Maldonado, if you don't know me, um, I'm the Director of Education at the Van Wazel, um, and I am here to tell you a little bit about our virtual programs that we have planned for this season. The Van Wazel is committed to being fully virtual this year, fully remote, um, that will only change if there's a significant change within um, our, our general school policy and school safety and what we all feel comfortable with. And we realized that that switch to virtual learning has created a bit of a challenge to you all as educators. So our goal is to continue just like these, these uh, people I'm presenting with, to continue that mission of providing materials that are standards based and support you in the classroom. And we want to help take away some of the barriers that are provided by this. So one thing I will say is all of the programs that I'm presenting today and in fact, all of our programs that we are offering this season will be completely free to teachers classes, regardless of what school you are teaching at. So just keep that in mind that anything you see, if you're interested in, please reach out to us because those are available at no cost. Um, and that's largely due to the generosity of the Van Weasel Foundation, as well as grants from um, the Community Foundation and other local supporters. So I just wanted to acknowledge that bit in case I forget it. If you are still waiting for a bingo and you have a picture or picture of chicken dance, look for some actual dancing chickens or some lovely women in costumes as dancing chickens because I changed a picture out. So just to give you that, uh, that little bit. Um, 
I forgot to share my sound and that is essential. So let me just fix that for you. When I share a video, I'm going to make the assumption that you can hear the, the sound unless someone unmutes and tells me that you can't hear. So please do do that um, if you need to. So here we go. Uh, so as I said, the Van Weasel is going completely virtual this season. And one of the things I think many of you have experienced here at the Van Weasel are our school time performances, where you come to the theater and you experience nationally recognized touring theater music and variety acts. Obviously, we are not able to have that as an opportunity, but a lot of the companies that we traditionally work with are uh, working just as hard as we are to provide virtual content. Right now, we have four announced. Those are my lovely dancing chicken dance ladies um, right there. Um, 15 on the road to freedom, uh, Anne of Green Gables, and Black Violin. So all of those will be available at various times. Um, chicken dance will be available all year. It's currently available. Anne of Green Gables will be available um, next week, I'm told, and it will also be available all year. Black Violin will be available during a six-week period that is likely to be in January and early February, and look for 15 on the Road to Freedom in February of, of next year. These will all be available via a link or a platform um, that we send you, so you register to us and you get that link. Many of them also have the work broken off into chunks. In fact, if you go to Chicken Dance or Anne of Green Gables, those are presented by TheaterWorks um, On Demand. And one thing I wanted to point out about that is you get more than the show. You can watch the show in four uh, segments of less than 15 minutes, and you do get information about learning to sing the song or dancing the chicken dance um, and a lot of different opportunities that are available. And that will be the same for Anne of Green Gables, which is down here. We will be announcing some more um, shows very shortly, um, two shows that we expect to be announcing. It is not official, but as our uh, special group, I'll let you know, look for announcements regarding um, Charlotte's Web and a science-based show that will be available uh, for a period of time. So those are kind of what I wanna to give to you as far as those virtual school time performances. Um, we also have, if you've ever had a Van Weasel teaching artist visit your classroom, you know that we really pride ourselves on providing arts integrated lessons that are tied to standards and engaging for students. They teach an art form. We have teaching artists in visual arts, drama, and movement, and they teach English language arts, science, math, social studies, writing. We have a numerous lessons that are currently available listed as virtual lessons on EdExplore right now. I'm going to show you all a short video. We had Deb, Deb Lombard who did a math and movement workshop with students from Lamarck Elementary. Now all of these virtual visits are available and easy to utilize for both your in-person students and remote students. So the video you'll see was actually done with the entire grade of Lamarck on at the same Zoom time. So we had about 170 students that participated in that session at that time. Usually we do break it off um, into individual classes, but we are always flexible making things work, what works best with your schedule. So this is where I'm gonna trust and please let me know if you do not hear. Excellent. Well, I think now we're ready to do some math. So here's four plus four. Plus four. Yes, you Deb, I do see a lot of kids with the correct answer. Did everyone get the number eight? 
me a thumbs up. Oh, that must have been too easy because you did that really make fast. Your body. Was there a number that was really hard to make? So you thought the number, Violet thinks the number eight was hard. You can show me with your fingers or if you're with your teacher. Oh, the number two. You know, the number two reminds me of a duck. Abigail says the number eight was the hardest. We have the number two. Seven, number <laughs> oh, Mrs. Miller's class says the number five, and I'm going to agree with that. So that is our virtual visits. This is some more information about how you can learn more about our programs. Um, we are on Ed Explore. I pulled up our provider page because as you can see, these are all virtual visits that we have available. We have um, Reshaping Learning Through Drama, which is visual arts and social emotional learning based, um, Telling Tales Through Tableau. We have an eco fashion class. We have a lot of different opportunities, whatever you're looking for, for your students. Um, so I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for the moment um, so I can see you all. Um, I do have some links to some of the videos, but I did want to see if there were questions first because I could always drop those links into the chat if you'd like to watch those at a later time. I will say the lessons are about, um, for most of the ages, about 30 minutes long. And um, we do, we've done them for preschool as well and been able to do them more as 15 minute lessons for our youngest students that have a harder time sitting in front of a, a screen for that remote learning. Any questions for Kelly? No questions. No questions. Everyone's just so thorough. And I mean, you're not at all tired from anything that you do during the day. I mean, I have a question. Has Go a ahead. question. Sure. I'm interested in the visual art lesson where an artist like gives a drawing lesson. Can you tell a little bit about both the artist and the lesson? Sure. So let me pull up so I can look at, because we have a few different ones. We have two visual artists that we work with. Um, and one of them is, uh, I have two bilingual artists. So if you do, if you are part of an ESOL classroom, if you are looking for a bilingual artist, we do have two, um, two bilingual artists. Um, but we have, Miss Kat does um, looking at the art alphabet and how we can look at creating mood and vocabulary words. So really um, illustrating the meaning of words as well as character portraits where we read or listen to a portion of text and then create a portrait of the character from that text. Um, starting to look at using that um, that close reading scale and pulling out evidence to support their, their drawings. But she really takes you through step by step how to do a character portrait. Um, and then we have Connie who does um, visual arts uh, where she has a, a math one or mathematics where she teaches students how to create visual um, optical illusions using the arts, uh, visual art, um, and starts to explain some of the math and science that's around there. Um, let me look at some of the other ones if we have. Um, our art habitats, making trioramas, that's my kind of, uh, Caitlin, can, it's more of a sculpture based uh, piece and how we can work with that. Emotions Illustrated is that um, art alphabet one where I talked about where the vocabulary words are emotion based. So we're really looking at how we create mood. Um, and then if you ever have any ideas of what uh, something you would like, just as Katie said, we do have artists that are highly flexible and willing to adapt lessons. Um, all the lessons that you see, the reason we have so many posted is we worked with Girls Inc, Boys and Girls Club and some of the summer boost classes over the summer to start to pilot some of these lessons. So these lessons have been tested in a virtual remote setting. So Kelly, is that for um, grades K through eight, like different assignments? Okay. Yeah. 
Okay. Yeah, K through K through eight. And um, I don't think we have any high school um, uh, teachers here, but if we do, we do have teaching artists that can adapt for that too. But yes, K through eight is, is available. And I think you may have seen from the school time show uh, shows that I listed, we really do have a, a range of, we, our audience is really pre-K through grade 12. Great. All right. Okay, wait, one last question. Okay. Can she give a, give um, her email, provide her email in the chat so I can set something up? For sure. And Thank they're you. all on yes. Explore too. Okay. You can okay. find Kelly, all of their explorations. Uh, Kelly, I have a question. Okay. Um, how do these set up? Like if you were interested in the Anne of Green Gables virtual performance, is it something we have to schedule through you? Or is that something we just have access to to play during our classroom at any time that works out? So um, um, everything that I've announced and everything that we're planning, unless we specifically gear it as like a one-time live performance and nothing I have said other than the virtual visits is that will be available for a window of time. So you will um, email, you can email me right there um, and I will get you with Margaret um, to make that reservation. Instead of getting, if you come to our shows, instead of getting an entry voucher, you will be sent a link with instructions um, to access that. So for of Anne of Green Gables, you would get the link to access that. It would, um, that chicken dance screen that I pulled up and it had all the links, it would look very similar to that one. Those two shows would look exactly like that. And then those shows are available until June 30th. So you could watch it with your class today or uh, you could watch it with your class uh, later. So you really get to plan it based on your needs. We are working with the company to do a number of live question and answer sessions with some of the creative team from that. So those will be live where we will say, on this day, if you are interested in logging on to a Zoom, you can log on and ask questions of the cast. And then if you choose to do that, it might it might be beneficial to watch the show prior to that, but you can truly watch it at your own time. So it's got even more flexibility than that 10 o'clock start time when you come to the Van Weasel. Um, and some are available all year. Like I said, Black Violin is available for six weeks. Um, I think the shortest amount of time any show that I'm looking at offering is available for a two-week window. So regardless, if you can't watch it in one sitting, you can watch it at various times. So if I thought I was going to have my students read the book mm -hmm. and I wanted to have them do a compare contrast with the performance, I don't have to have it done by this date. I could have access to it. So yep. if it takes them a little bit longer to read it, I still have access to it so that when they finish, then we can do a comparison. Exactly. You will have access to that show throughout the rest of the year. And it's even chunked up into segments. So if you wanted them to watch and, you know, compare even as they're reading, you can have them do it that way. Great. And I think what we'll do is um, I'm sure that our providers don't mind staying for a few minutes afterwards if you have a specific question for one of them. But we want to really be careful and conscious of your time. And we had this little bingo thing that we were doing. And uh, good job, you guys. Um, and Jason, we really appreciate Jason helping us run that. And if you had an interest with it, uh, I'm sure that he can be helpful with that. Uh, those of you that one have have heard back, but we have five different uh, prizes today and we will continue to have prizes for our previews to beautiful Ed Explore metal cups. Um, keep your coffee very hot and cold beverages very cold. Um, you can drink in style with those. We have two of those available. And thank you to all three of our providers who um, have given us some, some prizes as well. With Van Weasel, you get a, a choice from Kelly and, and she'll reach out to you and work with you to figure it out. Digital trivia on October 28th for a team of four or uh, New York Gilbert and Sullivan players stream with live chat October 24th. So coming up quick, but you can pick the Ringling uh, free museum admission for four people and with Moat, a free Sea Trek virtual field trip um, that you heard about today. So some good stuff. What I did was took the names, took the prizes, and here's what we've got. So Marissa Green, you are getting a fancy Ed Explore cup. 
um, as are you, Stephen Levitt. Those will be headed your way in Pony. I'll put them in tomorrow. Um, with our moat prize, we have Emma Vitolo. That may solve your question from Mr. Jaffe earlier today, um, or at least partially. Lisa McQuaid, you have gotten the Ringling uh, passes for four. And lastly, uh, Tunda, I hope I'm saying it right, Olson, you have the Van Wazel. Um, prize for today. So everybody, let's give them a virtual hand. Thank you for playing with us. And we'll have more prizes next time, as I said. Brian, take it away. Amazing, Angela. And thank you again so much uh, to our providers, our friends, Jason Ross and Brad at Moat, Katie uh, at The Ringling, and Kelly at The Van Wazel. Really special thank you to you, our teachers, dedicated every single day in an incredibly unique time. Um, thank you for all that you do most sincerely. Also note with us uh, today, many of our other providers are with us. Um, they're hanging out, uh, trying to learn just like you. Uh, and I really wanna thank uh, our providers for being here too. Uh, we're all learning together. And I just also wanna let you, our, our teachers know how important experiential learning really and truly is, and how much we really want to welcome in the community to our classroom, even in these times. Our artists uh, and our organizations are also uh, working hard, um, are really helping uh, the economy, and they too have had uh, some difficulty here, you can imagine. So I encourage you, whether it's our independent artists, uh, our organizations, to really, uh, to really bring them into your classroom, even if it's in a digital way. We highly encourage you to support our community just as we hope they're supporting you uh, and your students and learn. Thank you so much for your time tonight. It's like 532. We're two minutes over. Um, so I know some of us will hang around if you have any further questions. But in the meantime, thank you so much for all that you do. And we'll see you at our next one. Take care. So if you're still here and you have a question, go ahead and jump in. Kathy Shepler, do you have a question? All right, well, I think we're good. That's where you catch where people may have gotten, you know, a, um, a call or something. Yes, important. I'm gonna. It does happen. Oh yeah. I'm gonna. And think. There yeah. we go. So. Jeannie, a question? Anything? All right. Good job, hey, team. Thank you so much, everybody. Really, truly grateful. I mean, whew, talk about, you know, agility. So thank you. Yep, yep. The hardest part is not being able to see people when you share your screen. So I'm like, do I see what I'm Oh, that's that too. hard. And sometimes I pull it open because I oh, know I what's have there. Done that. So what I've taken to doing is just printing out my PowerPoint and yeah. stretching them out across the screen. I, you still can't see them all, but at least you see a few faces because you end up seeing only us because we're kind of at the top of the yeah. um, the top of the feed there. So thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you, you everybody. Sorry Katie. About the oh. technical issues. It's all right. Just, we no we made it work. Made it if you're through. on Zoom, there's technical. Issues. And you know what? It, <laughs> it makes, makes it more them, real. You know, it makes, it it makes more. them feel better because they deal with this stuff every day exactly. in their classrooms. That was by design. Yeah. Yes. Sure. So thank you for that opportunity for them, Brad. To you know, when they sound like a superhero. <laughs> like oh, everybody deals with this. All right. Yep. Exactly. Angela, will you send um, us the list of winners for our respective yes. places? Because I'll need to get in touch with mine. Okay. Yes, I will Thank do you. that. Um, I'll probably even do it now because uh, I have a little bit of time and I probably have to wait for the recording to render. So I think that's mm -hmm. great that Fruitville Elementary won the free seat.